lot of questions about what are the alternatives to natural gas furnace. Yeah, so where, I guess to give that question a little bit of context, where we are in Ottawa, Ontario, natural gas is cheap, hydro electricity is fairly expensive. So the majority of homes, especially new homes, are heated with natural gas furnaces. And that's because, like I said, the natural gas is cheap, but also because there's so many, the actual equipment is fairly cheap as well. The nice thing about a forced air furnace, whether it's natural gas or electric or an air source heat pump, which I'll expand on, is that you can have air conditioning as well throughout your entire home. So there's obviously a few different ways to heat your home. The majority of the time here, it's a natural gas furnace. That's how we're heating. In our, in our client in Ottawa, obviously you can have an electric furnace as well. We've done homes with radiant heating, so we would have a boiler system that would double as heating the water and then you could actually do that with a forced air system as well where it would heat up a coil and then blow it through the house or you have radiant tubes throughout your entire home and you heat all your floors. The issue with radiant heating or going with rads or anything like that is that you then still have to sort out your air conditioning. So where we are anyways, we have extreme heat and extreme cold. So we need to consider both. Not everyone wants air conditioning or needs it for your home, it's actually not a bad idea to have air conditioning because a lot of homes have, like this home has a lot of wood products. So you want to somewhat control the humidity levels in your house. In the summer we have a lot of humidity, so the wood is going to expand if you don't have air conditioning to reduce that humidity. And then the winter it gets really dry, so we actually want to add humidity a lot of the time. If you don't have a lot of people living in the home, uh, you're not doing a lot of cooking, not a lot of showers, there's not a lot of humidity being produced then you probably want a humidifier, which can also be added onto some sort of forced air furnace. There's all sorts of alternatives. So we have natural gas furnace, you can do an electric furnace, you can do an air source heat pump, which can be done through a central system, or it can be done through mini splits, which are ductless systems that are put on the wall, which is what we have here in this house, actually. The great thing about those is that they have air conditioning as well, so they double. An air source heat pump, if you're not familiar with it, it's the easiest way to explain it, it's the reverse of, of an air conditioner. So it'll work to, the ones that we use uh, will work to minus 25. Beyond that you might need some sort of supplementary or secondary heat source which is typically done through electric. We went with that option here because we didn't want fossil fuels. We chose that. We didn't want to be heating off the natural, natural gas. I know there's arguments out there saying well not all of your electricity uh, comes from hydro and I get that. Um, we have solar panels on, so that makes me feel a little bit better about that. <laughs> and then, like I said, there's also the boiler system, and through the boiler you can do radiant heat, you can do a forced air furnace. There's, there's all sorts of ways to look at that. And then, of course, there's also geothermal. Uh, the biggest question I get around is how come you don't heat with geothermal? In my opinion, it only makes sense to put geothermal in if you have an extremely inefficient home where you can't upgrade the efficiency. So in this case, it's because it's such a high upfront cost. Uh, so ge geothermal system has a very high upfront cost and if your home is already extremely efficient like our home here, you're never going to get that payback and there's a lot of mechanical moving parts and so forth. If you have a 100 year old house that you can't improve the insulation in, it's hard to change windows, whatever it may be, then it probably makes a lot of sense to go with a, a geothermal system. The other thing I touched on at the beginning is the fact that natural gas furnaces are so cheap. So. Obviously we can get electric furnaces really cheap, but because electricity is so expensive, it's not a very cost effective way to heat here in Ottawa. What you can do is do what we did here is a air source heat pump. So there are systems out there that have, you can change out your natural gas furnace and put an air source heat pump system in. The downside is, is that it's probably about, don't quote me 100% on this, but I think it's about three times the price as a typical natural gas furnace and the, the operating cost uh, ends up being about the same. The equipment itself is more expensive. The equipment, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the operating cost, from what I've heard from people who have done the switch, is that the operating cost here in Ontario is about the same. Meaning that the natural gas is so cheap, you know what your, your heating costs are, especially if that's what you had to begin with. Air source heat pump, although it's electric, is extremely efficient. So it uses a lot less electricity than say a typical electric like uh, resilient furnace where it's just heating a coil. So the actual operating costs end up being about the same in terms of what you would pay for your natural gas versus what you're paying for the, the heat with that hydro and an air source heat pump. 
So I guess the question that goes back there to you at that point, if you're considering something other than a natural gas furnace is, you know, what, what are your priorities? What's most important to you? Is cost most important to you? Is the environment most important to you? Is the, is the health, the environment, or your family more important to you? Are you just wanting to get off of fossil fuels and do your part long term? Be some considerations, you know, how much longer are you going to stay in the home? There might be incentives coming up actually that might, who knows what's going to come out. I know there is some stuff coming out shortly where we are. There's a lot of options to consider. Actually, one thing I didn't consider either is you can also heat with wood, obviously, if you're out in the country. You can get, there's actually furnaces, and I didn't talk about propane or anything like that, but you can get furnaces that'll heat with propane. Obviously, there's oil, but nobody puts those in anymore, hopefully. <laughs> and then you can actually get combinations where you can get a furnace that heats with propane, but also with wood, so you can actually load your wood furnace up, or you have wood stoves, or there's, there's those alternatives as well. And there's always new stuff coming out as well. There are some furnaces where it'll heat up like a mass, so you can use that mass when hydro costs are higher and then heat it up when the hydro costs are lower. It goes electric because we have time of use metering here. So there's so many factors to consider. What I recommend if you are wanting to improve the efficiency of your home, bring in an energy advisor first and then bring in a contractor or somebody who knows the whole picture and can work with you because starting with your furnace may not be the best way to do it if you're going to start doing other things like upgrading your windows and your insulation in your walls and so forth because then your heating system can actually be oversized which did i talk about that in a past video I... i'm not sure if i did so let's just touch on that quickly if you have an oversized furnace you can or heating source let's say because it might not be a furnace you can actually create short cycling which means in this case is more common in a natural gas furnace because it's usually like on or off uh, there might be different fan speeds but you know the flames on or off sort of thing what happens is that it's short cycles meaning that it'll actually heat up too quickly so if you have a one if you have one central thermostat where that which is typically in the central part of the house it'll actually heat up that area quicker and it doesn't actually heat up the far bedrooms, for example, of the home. So that's called short cycling and it's not actually, it actually becomes less efficient as opposed to running longer, preheating the ductwork and then getting to the furthest rooms of the house before it actually heats up the central portion of the house. And then the reverse would happen for air conditioning as well. So make sure you actually size your equipment properly. So don't just talk to the HVAC, if there's an HVAC contractor who says, oh, here's the size of your house and this is what you need, please do a little bit more homework, talk to an energy advisor, it's well worth the money. Here in Ontario right now, there actually is incentives, not through the government, but through Enbridge and Hydro, where you can actually get that money back for the energy advisor. So it's, it's if you're going to do the upgrades anyways, it's a no-brainer. So, I know I touched on a lot in this video, so please let me know if you want me to expand on any of this. Leave the comments below if you're watching the video, if you're listening to us on the podcast. Shoot us a message. Veronica, how should they get a hold of us? <laughs> Any social media platforms or our website. You can find us. Search the Conscious Builder. Yeah, email us through the website. It's pretty easy to get a hold of us. So. Shoot us your questions. Happy to answer them.